Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Hello, everybody. I am Ligia Filgueiras, and I'm going to present the work uh, Teaching Bioanthropology in the Brazilian Amazon during the COVID-19 pandemic and in experience report. This work is from me and Dr. Ariana Silva. Well, um, just an initial conversation, uh, teaching bioanthropology in the Brazilian Amazon is by itself a great challenge, especially when we talk about the Pará State University, UEPA. Uh, since there, the, this research area is not well known. So in March 20, 2020, <laughs> Uh, COVID-19 pandemic started officially here in Brazil. I, I say pandemic, not necessarily the correct word, word uh, but yes, syndemics, because it's a health problem uh, mixed with social, political, and economic contexts all together according to Singer and collaborators from 2017. So here in this university where I work and uh, Professor Ariana Silva too also works, uh, the, bio, the bioanthropology graduate discipline is offered in many campi and professors are design, designated to travel to these locals and teach during some days. This discipline has 60 hours, right? And um, um, since March from last year, we had to learn how to work with Google and Google family courses on how to learn to teach better in these conditions. Uh, how to record videos, how to feed the digital world. And so do the students, they had to learn everything. Um, but uh, because of the pandemic, we, uh, the university decided not to have classes, but only in August ahead, there were classes. And there are many courses, um, like in Santarém, where I was working for the me medicine nursery course, they have a different methodology. They work with problem-based problem learning. And it was for our class online. And December on, we started, I started with the biology course, right? And then we are going to talk about some difficulties in the Amazon region, I ask, is this only the in the Amazon region? So just to tell you some of the problems we faced, not all the students have access to internet. Some of them don't have computers. Some of them don't have don't have the mobile phones. And sometimes there is one mobile, one cell phone for the family. And this bioanthropology discipline had to be broken in synchronic and asynchronic moments where students could read articles, watch our videos that were previously recorded and, uh, and our explanations. At the same time, they had to learn all these technologies. All of us have to. But some places in the Amazon, there is no internet at all, or they are very, very weak signal. They have very, very weak signal. And some of them don't have, there is no electricity, okay? Uh, some of the sentences I, I highlight here uh, from the students is, my cell doesn't read Word or PowerPoint. So we prepare a class in PowerPoint and their mobile don't have, doesn't have how to read it, how to, to open it. Um, some campus 
the campus has to has got to help these students and when they don't have internet in their houses we advise them to go to the campus but they they say they are always full of people because there are few equipments so in the computer room there are five computers who work properly and so they cannot access. They, they complain about no human contact as well. Um, and many other situations like, ah, today is the test, but I can't, I, I don't know, I don't have internet, how can I? So we have to manage uh, group tests so they can discuss a little. But from everybody, the most important is no privacy. Okay, we do not we do not have privacy anymore. So we have to send the test in PDF, Word, picture, and to correct all, all these forms. There are Google families, etc. All the 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 apps the apps that we have, but we end up using the the most famous here in Brazil, it's WhatsApp. Um, and for professors, they, they affirm that I have to teach synchronic and isochronic, and I have to record sometimes three kinds of videos. So it's exhausting. And for female professors, we have been judged by intellect and appearance. So this is more difficult for women, especially when they have children that are always interfering, calling for attention, etc. And one sentence that I highlight uh, as well, everybody knows our pets, our families, our privacy. And this is me and one of my pets. Okay, uh, WEPA has made a selection to help uh, students who didn't have a condition to have internet. So they, they offered by um, selection program uh, a ship where they could put in their cell phones and then connect. But there were in the total only uh, 412 students applied. And they complain that the 20 gigabytes is not enough in one or two classes, this is over, okay? And the, the recharge is not often, so they have to pay themselves. Sometimes they do not have money for that. Uh, I highlight here uh, uh, another situation that a student of mine, finally we managed to, uh, to share the files and the most um, uh, available was Telegram. So I sent Telegram and she said, oh, I, I installed the, Apple, the app, sorry, but I cannot uh, make it work because they sent a code to my cell phone and here in the rural area, there is no internet. So, and this side, I can show you that sometimes there are professors and teachers that are working through the WhatsApp. This is a classroom, there are some explanations, and these are the, the, the mathematics uh, calculations they have to do it. And the students have to resend it. This is Professor Ariana in one of the, her classrooms, which had 101 students in a time, right? And sometimes, as you can see, they do not want to show they are, they are present. Sometimes we feel very alone, lonely, because sometimes we think we are talking by ourselves. But, we have some amazing experience from our uh, related um, sentences. 
Adopting the active methodologies was helpful so as soon as are the protagonist of his or her production of his or her own knowledge. It is useful because I can show experimental classes through videos. I see a lot of people, a lot of professors recording their experimental classes and, and let them available for everybody to see. Case studies, uh, the, the PBL I told you, we, got, we have a guided question that is sent to students. So this simulates Soviet through readings, researching, collective group work. The advantage of what we are living nowadays is to invite our people or to talk to outside researchers. And um, there are new ways to learn, right? Podcasts, we can communicate through podcasts, comic books, uh, together with some free software, they can produce a lot of material. And the possibility to see and watch lives from different places around the world, from different researchers, and this is amazing. So here are some exper experiments, experiences of these. Um, these. These are two projects kindly shared by Professor Dr. Lucia Silva, which is ecological um, soap and the red mud that were all produced by their students themselves. So they have a lot of productions going on. And here we can see one of my, um, together with Handelso Souza and Gabriela Cosa, we managed to have this booklet for the school. We were going to have an intervention, but because of COVID-19, we couldn't. But there are still many areas without electricity in Amazon, without internet. So how can you teach through internet? How can you teach this way? So we always have to ask for help from the campus, from friends, from professors to download material and to share this material. Uh, it, um, Christmas material is still a reality and sometimes it is uh, usable for students, but we more we need more public policies to improve teaching quality and to access uh, to technology for students and teachers as COVID-19 is still ongoing and uh, we have a lot of difficulties here because of the current Brazilian government. Well, these are our references. Thank you very much. I hope you have uh, understood. If you have any questions, let's talk. Okay, thank you.